start sequence initiating. The Hyperion XP-1 is a hydrogen-powered supercar that will be built in Ohio. Normally, I do highly visual reviews, uh, something a bit different here. I'm sharing my internet interview with Hyperion's CEO and founding member, Angelo Cafenteris. Not perfect audio and video, but thought you'd all be interested in what he has to say. I'm going to get out of the way and let Angelo talk. This might be an automotive channel, but Hyperion is really more of an energy company. We're going to find out about the hydrogen infrastructure and more about Angelo himself. Pretty fascinating guy. A reminder, subscribe to this channel if you want the best in automotive content. Watch this and you'll be the smartest guy in the room. We've been around since 2011, and when we began the company, we were primarily focus on the refueling infrastructure side. My background is automotive engineering uh, and design. The question had always been the chicken or the egg scenario. What we did was we started off with uh, the egg, so to speak. Uh, we looked at that problem. We, we found solutions to that problem. That was the energy side. Uh, we really need to look at the chicken now. And uh, the point of the chicken, which would be, in this case, the vehicle, the XP-1, we wanted to use the vehicle as a, um, a storytelling tool. We wanted to build what would be the ultimate version of a hydrogen car, something that uh, in and of itself showcased all the benefits of hydrogen that most people are unaware of. Some of the most obvious benefits uh, would be a, uh, an extremely long range. Uh, hydrogen is an amazing way of storing massive amounts of power. And the number is over 1,000 miles range for this vehicle. Uh, the other thing that we thought was a very good value proposition for the consumer that they were unaware of, so this vehicle can actually refuel in under uh, five minutes, right? So between three and five minutes, this vehicle will refuel, and you'll get that full 1,000 miles range. There's so much misinformation about hydrogen that we really needed somebody to be the spokesperson for that technology. And the car is actually the spokesperson. The name uh, Hyperion, in fact, actually means um, beyond the furthest point, right? Uh, it is a Greek word, the syntax hyper meaning beyond and ion meaning the highest possible for this point. And we want to just push the boundaries with this vehicle because that's what hydrogen as a technology allows. After uh, hydrogen has a very long life cycle. That's another thing that's really good about it. The reality is every time you charge battery pack, you're degrading your battery. And that's because it's a high heat process. It's a lot of voltage. Um, and that's a very important thing when it comes to recyclability for the environment. When it comes to a battery-powered vehicle, it's extraordinarily cost prohibitive because of the intricity of the battery themselves and the number, the sheer number of batteries that make up for it. So there's just so many misconceptions um, and false information about how great one technology is and, and how another technology maybe isn't so great. And Hyperion is just here to set the record straight. We're here to say, actually, hydrogen is pretty amazing technology. There's a reason people at NASA have been using it for 60 years. As far as the spokesperson is concerned, the car, yes. um, what can you tell me about the makeup of it, um, what it can do, uh, why it's so impressive? Uh, mm -hmm. It obviously looks great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the team worked very hard to uh, make this thing as compelling a product to use and as compelling a product to interact with, which includes, you know, of course, the way it looks. So um, what's special about this car is, is extraordinarily lightweight. This vehicle is, you know, under uh, 2,000, uh, um, actually, it's close to 2,275 pounds, actually below that. And that allows us to have extreme efficiency. In fact, the vehicle will be less weight than that. That's why we like to use less than and more than. We're in our, I think, fourth prototype that's all running. This is not a, a just a designed vehicle. These are running vehicles. And um, what's special about it is it gets its performance through its ultra low weight. So it has a hydrogen fuel cell uh, that's getting its power, right, through this hydrogen storage system. And then it has ultra capacitors to basically give you that boost of energy that you need for that zero to 60. And you need uh, basically the ability to have power for long range and power for high speed. And the combination of hydrogen that's charging ultra capacitors working together creates the benefit of having both those technologies working in unison and a very low weight package utilizing not just carbon fiber, but also titanium in very strategic ways that allow this thing uh, essentially to be very, very uh, quick. 
I understand that you're from the Midwest. You're yes. from Ohio. That's right. Uh, the car is from Ohio. Um, yes. Why yes. is that important to you? Okay. Uh, first off, you can never forget your roots. Uh, I, I, I love Ohio. I'm from Ohio. A lot of our team is from Ohio and Michigan. Um, you know, I was educated in Detroit. I, I came here to California, but the company actually started in Ohio, made its way to California whenever we refocused on the car itself. And it's important to us because, you know, the Midwest represents very down to earth, hardworking people. Um, it, it's about innovation. We want to bring uh, facilities back to the Midwest uh, so that people can be involved in the next era of cutting edge energy and transportation. Um, but the primary focus is trying to bring back some of the lost jobs, trying to bring back some of the lost innovation back to America and back to the areas in, in America that need it most. And this is one of the reasons why we love, again, working with NASA so much, because this is one of NASA's prime directives. Are you sharing plans for any other vehicles? Do you have any in the works? Yes, no, we absolutely do. I don't want, the last thing I want people to think is we are some sort of supercar manufacturer only. Uh, the car is higher in price. Um, we, we had to, to do that to, to fit in some of this exciting technology, specifically the NASA technology. Um, the goal is to have a higher price vehicle that, that operates as a halo vehicle. The re reason for that is it's a demonstrator vehicle um, where no expenses were spared to get that technology to commercialization. That's not a cheap endeavor. After the first vehicle, it's about trickling down that technology into other vehicles. And so there are two vehicles in addition to this vehicle that are, are already being planned and built as we speak. But the next chapter of Hyperion is actually not a vehicle, it's actually actually these stations. And we want to build um, some very low cost stations compared to what's on the market currently across the, the country in a network. And I think that's probably consumer's concern that the infrastructure won't be there. And it's a very expensive thing to build out. I'm like 1,000 miles range is meant to quell some of that. This won't be the only vehicle that has that figure. Uh, and basically, there needs to be more stations. But instead of us waiting for that, we definitely want to be the ones building that and helping the industry to build it with us. We just wanted them to have a consumer experience where they have a very fast recharge, a uh, opportunity to fill up once, you know, every month, depending on how much they drive. Many people have another misconception. Many people think that hydrogen infrastructure is one of the drawbacks compared to batteries. And I, I, I'm here to clear that up. If you are uh, lucky or unlucky enough to live in, you know, parts of, of, of California where a lot of people have battery electric vehicles, there are, are power outages regularly, right? The, if the grid can't handle it, right? I think the last figure I heard was something like uh, three to four cars uh, per block. It, it currently is how it's built. Uh, to get every household to have a battery powered car charging would require enormous uh, amount of capital in rebuilding that infrastructure for hydrogen. So our goal is to say, look guys, here's the amount of money it takes to rebuild that infrastructure for charging at your home. And here's the amount of money for the infrastructure when you have a range that can go much longer and you need fewer stations. Do you see how this is much smaller? That's the benefit of hydrogen. Hey, um, before I forget, do you have a price for the XP1? Are you sharing that yet? I'll say this, compare the performance figures to other vehicles in that category. And that's about the price you're expecting to pay. But we are going to make this affordable by comparison. And so this is the penultimate version. There will be more attainable versions in the future. There's a logo that's down on the side rear flank of the car. And I can't yes. quite make it out. What is that? There's all kinds of hidden uh, messages. And you found one of them. That is actually Leonidas, uh, uh, the, the famous Greek Spartan, who you know ah. went and, and I think we all know the story. With, with just a small group of 300 of his personal guard to essentially hold off uh, the Persians' attack. We want to unite the hydrogen industry. Many, there's, we've been doing this for so long, there's so many tiny hydrogen companies nobody knows about. They don't really work with one another like they need to. Uh, we need to, right? Uh, and that, Leonidas represents going out on a limb, doing something insane, but also uniting people in a direction that you truly believe in. And we truly believe in hydrogen. We're not alone. Uh, you are an engineer. You've worked in the automotive industry. But 
Um, you worked at Mattel for a number of years. Yeah. Um, how do you go from being, uh, you know, obviously an engineer yeah. because toys need to be engineered? How do you go from Mattel to hydrogen super? Okay, uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, essentially, you know, my background is automotive uh, engineering and design, right? Sure. The fact that I was at Mattel is the question. Many people with my background are like, wait, what are you doing here? I wasn't expecting to be there for a very long period of time, but I fell in love with people. I learned a lot of great lessons at Mattel, and I think you're referencing Hot Wheels to see some toy cars behind you. And the people of the automotive industry are very different from the people of the toy industry. And the toy industry is extraordinarily minded, extraordinarily welcoming. There, there are learned so much about management and technology and development and inventor relations and pushing boundaries, believe it or not, in the toy industry. Yeah. Um, and because of that, I was able to go off and do this in a unique way. We, did, we didn't want to have any compromise. We didn't want to build things because they've been built a certain way for a number of years. And what Mattel, a lot, a lot of uh, leadership uh, in that direction was offer this magic. And it's magical because there's always a moment and, and it was called a magic moment where something happened on the, on the toy, right? And when that thing happened, it's a mechanical thing, but actually to a child who doesn't understand it, it's magic. For that brief moment, we don't understand it's magic. We want to offer magic moments on the car similarly. And so when you look at the car, there's this beautiful uh, wing, the solar wing that collects solar and articulates you know, with the sun to, to be at the right angle and allows uh, articulated downforce at speed to get better downforce and cornering ability. This is one of the mechanical things that moves on the vehicle that also is a magic moment. For a second, you're like, wait a minute, what am I looking at? What is that? Is that a wing? Is that a solar panel? Does that move? What's going on? And in that magic moment, you're, you're, you're like taken aback. And we wanted to put as many of those moments in the car as possible. And that's kind of our goal. We wanted to give you guys the big pick, look at this car, look at all of the specs that it can do. And then also say, and by the way, this is what this thing does if you weren't sure. Yeah. To answer your question, um, Mattel was a wonderful experience sure. for me, Hot Wheels and the magic of building a product in a purest form. And we wanted to do something similar to that in the automotive industry. And I think that it allowed us to think clearly about what was important and allow us to have a no compromise approach to a vehicle. My role there was an actually innovation design manager, basically building all those fancy mechanisms that have the magic moment, working with the Hot Wheels team designing vehicles. But more importantly, I worked with inventors on a regular basis. And, and you need to work with partners and inventors to create new technology, right? And one of, I think, the most valuable things that I learned from Mattel was it's about the people. Number one is about the people. You, you interview anybody who works at Hyperion, yes, the car is exciting. Yes, the technology is really cool. Yeah, it's really awesome. We're working with NASA. It's the people. People are here because of the people. You want to be somewhere where you, your ideas are heard, where people are listening, and where you're taken care of. And, and this is one big family and we work very you know, hard, but we also take care of one another. And the people are most important. I learned that at Mattel. And I also learned when you have multiple things happening, there's a wonderful opportunity for cross pollinization. Had we only focused on the car, had we only focused on the station, we would not have discovered core technologies that actually crisscross, right? And because they do, because you're taking technology from one that would never have been in the other, all of a sudden you have something that no one ever would have thought to do. And that's something that we learned from, from our from past history there. And I think one thing that people are missing from electric cars, I know that I am, is the sound, right? There is a symphony that, uh, of, of explosions, uh, fireworks that we're used to in, under our hood. Hydrogen has to force oxygen through a blower to recombine with that hydrogen. And doing so, you get this, it sounds like a dragon clearing its throat. And there's, it's exhilarating. I can tell you it's exhilarating. And so many manufacturers are you know, trying to quiet it down. We're not quieting it down. We want it to be loud. Hydrogen, you haven't heard it all. You're more hydrogen powered than you think. We're made of hydrogen. The sun's made of hydrogen. The universe is full of hydrogen. It's not smart to be smirched hydrogen because it's everywhere and it's a great yeah. energy source. It's, it's what we've been using, in fact, even in 
and gasoline is hydrogen, just has carbon. And we are going to explain all the great things about hydrogen in addition to showing what it can be in a product and then backfill it with, this is where you're going to feel this thing. Well, there you go. Again, something a little bit different from me. Normally I do high quality car review videos and not Zoom meetings, but thought you would be interested in this. And if you want to see what I normally do, there will be boxes and links showing up here, here and here. If they haven't already, I feel a little bit like the Brady Bunch here. And of course, um, leave a comment or any questions that you might have and subscribe to this channel. It's pretty good. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.